Anna here and I'm back today to teach you all about some map reading skills. Now, in other roles that I do as well as being a scout leader, I'm also uh, an Ordnance Survey Get Outside champion. And what that means is that I actively try and encourage more people to get outside. Now, one of the things that you can do outside is go hill walking or just walking around your local area. And you can only really do that safely if you know where you're going. So get yourselves a map and I'm gonna teach you how to read them. There are quite a lot of maps out there, but these I find are the best ones. Now, Ordnance Survey are the biggest company in the UK that design and make our maps for us. Uh, the different types is the Explorer, which is the orange one, and the Land Ranger, which is the bright pink one. The difference is, is the scales on the maps. If you look really closely, the Explorer is 1 to 25,000 in scale, and the Land Ranger is 1 to 50,000 in scale. Now, what that means is a one centimetre area would be 250 metres of land on this map, one centimetre on this map would represent 500 metres. Okay, so this is a map uh, local to my area. Now, once we've got the map, the reason why I know which map I need is not only because it tells me this is the map I want, but on the back, Ordnance Survey very kindly demonstrate which maps are which on these maps, on the actual map itself. So if ever you're stuck, grab a map, have a look on the back and see if it's in the area that you're looking for. Now I know that I'm in the area. I know that I want Great Malvern and Great Malvern is 190. I simply go to the map shelf and I find 190 and that's the map that I want. So once we've chosen our map and we know where we want to go, we're going to open it up and all the maps are really, really big. Now you can use Ordnance Survey on a mobile phone, download the app. You can also access it online, print it off, and then you only carry whatever size printer paper you've printed it onto. I do like to carry an official, proper, full-size map, just in case I go off the edge of my map and I can simply look at the extended pages. Now the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to find and understand map symbols. So I'm just showing you now, close up onto the map, you can all see that there's quite a lot of colours, lots of different symbols and lots of different text on the map. If ever you get confused, always look at the bottom or the top of a map and you'll always find the key. Every piece of land on a map in the whole of the UK is owned by someone. So we can't just amble through anywhere. So in order to know where we can go, there's a really nice technique that I like to I like teach. To call it the traffic light system. If you look down at the bottom, you'll see communications in the key. And in communications, you'll see lots of different coloured roads. These are all roads and paths. Now with the colours of the traffic light system, red on a traffic light means stop. Now on red, this is quite more like a pink, but we'll use it for the same analogy. So anything red or pink is very dangerous road, an A road with traffic up to 70 miles an hour. Then we move on to the amber colour of a traffic light, which are the orange and yellow roads. Orange and yellow roads are B and C roads, and they still have traffic on. And at the traffic light system, at amber, we will slow down and wait to see if anything's coming. And when we're out walking, we would do the same thing at a yellow or orange road. And then we jump to the green. Green on a traffic light means go. So anything green on the public rights of way and the communications are public footpaths. They are all green, dotted, dashed, crossed. These here are bridleways. And they also have diamonds over here. Diamonds are national trails, so they'll have signposts telling you which way to go. So as long as it's green and it's a footpath, bridleway, byway, cycle route or national trail, you're good to go. Yellow and amber, warning, watch out there are cars nearby. Red or pink, do not go or enter. This is a very fast, dangerous road. Now the other colour you can see here is blue. I've deliberately missed the blue you can all see a solid blue line on your map. It's very important to understand. This does not exist on a traffic light and it should not exist when you go navigating or walking. The blue line can represent either water or a motorway, both of which are very hazardous and extremely dangerous. So try to avoid those areas at all possible. The only exception to the rule is if you have a green footpath crossing a blue, then there is an access point. So you can probably just about see here a diamond trail that goes over or under the motorway here and continues. So as long as there's green, it's safe and there will be an access point, but you could not walk along the motorway. I've decided to start my route in Cheeksbury right here. And I can see that there's a diamond trail. So I'm gonna take this diamond trail northeast on the map alongside the blue, which you can all see there is a river. 
And as I come up the map, you'll start to see that there are little symbols along my route. One of the symbols I'd like to learn about, and that is over here, this blue symbol here, which I can access by taking the footpath over the M5 motorway and safely to there. Now finding out what this symbol means, we simply look at the bottom of our map and look for the symbol. And you can see it here, and it tells me the symbol is a National Trust site. So this is a place of interest for tourism. So I'm gonna plot my route to come up the river and go and have a look to see what's at the National Trust site. So now I've learned whereabouts I can and cannot go and the areas which could be hazardous. I've plotted my route and now I just need to follow it. And by following it, I just simply make sure my map is lined up to the ground. So the next thing I wanna teach you is how to line up a map to the ground so I know that I'm pointing in the correct direction. For this, you're gonna need a compass. So I've got mine and I'm all ready. Now every single compass will point to north and that is due to the magnetic field of our earth. Now not all compasses will point north and that is if they've been left over time or been damaged, they can actually depolarize and spin and actually point you in completely the wrong opposite direction, south. So always make sure that your compass is working and then once we've got a working compass, we can start to find out which direction we're going. The first thing you need to do is find out where north is and that is simply to look at where the red needle is pointing towards when you lay the compass down on a flat surface like my hand. This is showing me that north is currently to my left in the direction that I'm stood. If I were to turn myself left and keep my compass in that direction, I'm now facing north. I do the same thing on my map. So on the top of my map is north, that means the bottom is south and we can work out the rest in between. So if I know that the top is north, I'm going to lay my map flat, lay my compass on top of it. So the top of my compass, where the arrowhead is for the direction of travel, points to the top of my map. So I'm lining everything up. Now I spin everything until the red needle is lining up with north. Now what I've demonstrated is that my map sits exactly to the ground. So when I'm facing north, my compass is north and my map is also showing me north. Now that I know which way I'm heading, I know that I need to head north to follow my footpath up the river and then once I get up there I'm going to head east. So when I get to that point I'll check my compass and make sure that I'm heading east. Now to do this is to take a bearing, so I'm going to teach you a bearing now. Now I'm using the edge of my compass to line up the direction in which I need to turn. When I get to this junction here, as you can see, there's a pub and I found out that this is a pub using my map symbol. I'm going to line up the edge of the compass in the direction that I wish to travel in. My compass arrow is also pointing in my direction of travel. Don't turn it the wrong way because then it's assuming you're over here and walking back. So I line it up with the edge of my compass and make sure that my map and compass are flat. I now spin the bezel, which is this section here of the compass with all the numbers on. And I spin it so that the north, which is the N on the compass, lines up with north, which is the top of the map. Once I've lined that up and made sure that my lines within my compass are perpendicular to the lines on the map, now I've got my bearing reading. And you can see the bearing here is located approximately 90 degrees. Now we know that east is 90 degrees. So when I get to this junction here, I simply get my compass, I turn my compass until the red needle lines up with the red arrow. And there is east. All I need to now do is walk on this arrow's direction until I get to my point. So now we've learned all about the map symbols and the colors and where we can and cannot access. And I've also taught you how to take a bearing using a compass and set the map to the ground. The last thing I want to do is teach you a six-figure grid reference so you're able to tell people where you are when you eventually get there. So all OS maps are divided up with these faint blue lines on the map, which hopefully you can just about see. These lines can go north to south and west to east. And at the edges of these blue lines, you can see numbers. And these numbers are the things that are going to help us locate where we are. In order to read a grid reference, we always choose which area we're going to look at first. So for ease, I'm going to choose this area here because you can all see quite large text in the box. Now the grid box itself is just there. It's quite faint to see it on the camera. Now the way we read this is we always read the bottom left of the grid that we want. So I can see this line here and this line here. It makes an L shape. 
So the first number we're going to read is the vertical line, which is 73. And the second number we're going to read at the bottom of the L is a horizontal line of 32. So a four figure grid reference of this square here would be 7332. Now some people do get them mixed up, but the easiest way to remember this, and you probably all heard it, is you come along the corridor first, and then you come up the stairs. Now in order to make a four figure, a six figure good reference, is we have to do something with our imagination, and imagine that there are further 10 invisible lines. Now we can have aids down here that will help us. You can see that there are some shaded blue and clear empty white boxes. Each one of these represents the sixth figure of each box. So now if we wanted to zoom in even more, we can take a six figure and I'm going to show you that by bringing the camera in. So this time I'm going to find this symbol here, which is a duck, which is a nature reserve. So in order to read this grid reference, I'm going to look at the vertical line first. Now I can see that it's in this box or just about in this box. So it's on the vertical line first, read seven one. I continue along this box as far as it is level with the duck. Now the duck is actually in line with the one. So I'm going to read this 710 because it's not 711 or 712 or 713. It's on the line. So this is 710. I'm now going to read the horizontal line, which is 31. Now the duck is actually positioned higher than the number and it's approximately one, two, three, four, four boxes higher than that number. So this becomes 314. So the sixth figure is now 710314. I'd like to be able to find out where my nature reserve is. So we're going to do a six figure grid reference of this location. Now it's quite far away from the edge of my map to be able to read the numbers. So instead of having to look all the way down and all the way across, what we can do is look for the coordinates that lie within the map. Now you can see just about there are numbers located here and there are also numbers located here. So I'm going to use these numbers as they are closer to the symbol that I'm trying to read. Now in order to read this map symbol we're going to use the same technique. So the box that it sits in is here. I'm going to read the bottom left of the box. Reading the vertical line first I can see that the vertical line is at 9-1. Now we need to come across to see how far into 9-1 it sits so we simply take a guesstimate by reading the width of the box. Now the box itself from there to there is divided into another 10 invisible lines. Halfway would be five and we know it's slightly more than halfway but it's certainly not all the way. So it's somewhere around seven. Now the horizontal line sits at three six and we do the same. We know it's three six, we come up and it's almost near three seven. So we could say that's nine. So now we read this six figure grid reference with all the figures put together. Nine, one, seven, three, six, nine. Lands us directly on top of the National Trust. To finalize our six figure, we look at the bottom right of the map and we can see SO for the area on our map. We add the SO to those six figures. So the final six figure is read like this. SO, nine, one, seven, three, six, nine. And that's how we do a six figure grid reference. As you can see with six figures, we have to divide our grid box into an invisible 10 further lines. And that breaks our kilometer into 10 lots of 100 meters. So a six figure grid reference is accurate to 100 meters. So always be mindful to read it correctly and make sure you do get it close within that 100 meters if someone is likely to come to find you if you're lost. The next things you wanna add is time scales and distances. So you can measure how long it's gonna take you to get to those places. But for today in this lesson, that's it. And if you really love your maps like I do, it's not just paper maps or laminated maps that you can buy. You can also get yourself splash maps, which is an ordnance survey map printed on a material that is small enough to stick in your pocket and it's waterproof for those rainy days on the hill. And they also do ordnance survey beach towns from Life Venture. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for more next week and remember to hit the subscribe button.